Okay. Today's passage is very, very well known. Handwriting on the wall. Okay. So, we just read, but it was a very long scripture. Let me just summarize it for you. So, this king opened up a party. And he basically invited everyone. All of the who is who. About a thousand people. And then their wives, not even only their wives, but their concubines. So there was a lot of people. It was a huge gathering, huge party that the king gave. And at the height of the party, when the king was getting drunk, you know, he said, bring out those vessels. Bring out those vessels that he served in the, king, in the temple of God. We will drink from them. Man, they brought out this gold, golden vessel. He filled them with wine and he drank his Lord's strength. The wives of the Lord, the concubines, I mean, everybody drank from this. Now, while they were drinking these and praising their gods, the god of gold, silver, bronze, even stone, while they were drinking, a hand appeared. I mean, this must have been a fantastic thing. You're, you're just, everybody's just, just talking and having a good time, drinking, and all of a sudden, there's this hand, and it's writing something on the wall. But nobody could figure out what that is. So King, he interrupts the party, and he just, all the wise men come in. Tell me what that says. Tell me what that says. Nobody could say it. And the queen comes in and I said, you know what? There was a guy when your father was ruling, he was really, really smart. Why don't we bring him in? So Daniel comes in, and this is the funny thing. Before Daniel interprets this, he first convicts the king. This is what he says. He was brought in to do what? Interpret that handwriting. Apparently, you know, Daniel was a very high official under King Nebuchadnezzar, right? King Nebuchadnezzar set him up above everybody else. But apparently when his son ruled, basically they cast David, uh, Daniel aside. King didn't really know him that well. So Daniel comes into the new king's presence. He doesn't know what this king is like. But as soon as he's brought in, First thing he does is he convicts the king. And this is what he says, O king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, kingship in greatness and glory and majesty. Listen. Your father, everything he had, God gave to him. He wasn't great. God made him great. It's because of God that your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, because of your father you have all this thing. If you weren't his king, I mean, if you weren't his son, basically, you wouldn't have any of this stuff, right? He's a prince. Wangja. Okay. So, because your father was a king, now you became a king. But your father was a great king because what? The most high God. Gave him the greatness, glory, and majesty. He convicts the king first. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened so that he dealt proudly, he was brought down from the kingly throne. And his glory was taken from him. And we know this story. And he became a beast. So he's convicting, he's reminding his son. You know, your father, he was a king. He was great because God gave him his kingdom, but when his heart was proud, God hit him and he brought him low and he turned into a beast and he ate the grass and he was like any other animal. He became an animal. And when his sanity was returned, he praised God all over again. And then he says this, and the vessels of God, you brought it, and then you're drinking from these. You're that most these vessels 
that was served to serve that Most High God. You brought it and you're just drinking from it and you're just parting from it and you're just kind of <coughs> disregarding God. And then Daniel, after he convicts the king, interprets the dream for the king because this is what he was wanting to do. And he says this, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Basically, God said, that's it for you. You think you're the king? You think you, you decide everything? You think you're the most powerful in this kingdom? Well, God has numbered your days and he said to you, that's it. No more. And you, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. You have been weighed and you lost. Your kingdom is divided and given to Medes and Persians. So he interprets this dream, and King, even though this is a bad interpretation for him, he still honors his promise, and he rewards and promotes Daniel to the third ruler of the kingdom. Okay? He promotes him, and immediately that night, what happens to the king? Anybody remember from reading this? He dies. What a fool. Somebody comes in and you know God tells you, that's it. What should he have done? What should he have done? He should have repented. Oh God, I'm sorry. I was such a fool. But you know what? In his kingly palm, he said, oh, you have gave good interpretation. Now what I promise you, I'm going to give you because I'm what? I'm the king and I honor my words. So here's the reward and here's the promotion. Not knowing that he's going to die, he's actually going to die that very night. Now when Daniel said to Belshazzar, though you knew all of this, what exactly did Belshazzar know? That Daniel was convicting him that you knew all this, though you knew all this. Now we've been reading the book of Daniel for the last three weeks. Daniel 1, Daniel 2, Daniel 3. King Nebuchadnezzar was on this, this journey with God. He honors God, and then he wants to put three guys in burning furnace because he's not praising the idol that he built, but wants to keep on worshiping the God that he himself was said, glorify your king, glorify your God. Your God is the number one God. He put three, these three people into the burning furnace and said, well, which God could save you from my hand? Something is not right with this king. First, he honors the king of Daniel, uh, the God of Daniel, by, by saying, your, your God is the true, one true God. And then he turns around and builds an idol. He says, you should worship that idol. And if and when those three guys don't do it, he shall he said, What who's gonna save you from my hand? Which God is gonna save you from me? Basically, he's putting himself above God. He said, Your God is pretty good. Your God is pretty high. But you know, I'm the king. Your God cannot save you from my hands. But what happened? God did save these three people. And what did King Nebuchadnezzar do? Immediately he said, what? Your God is one true God again. And he praised the God of these three friends of Daniel. Again, he's praising God. And what did he do now? He had another vision. And Daniel tells him, don't be proud. God's going to bring you down. But then he becomes proud again. And God takes his sanity away from him, takes his reasoning away from him, and he becomes a beast, he becomes an animal, and he takes him seven years of, can you imagine being an animal? You're eating the grass, you're rolling around in mud, you're going to the bathroom outside, you're just, you're just being an animal seven, and it took him seven years and then when he suddenly came back to him, he said, what? Wow. 
This is point when King Nebuchadnezzar truly realized that God is above me, is above everything. That everything I have, God gave it to me. It is from God. I am nothing. Anybody's proud? Well, God could bring you down. God could humble you. And after this, there's no mention of King Nebuchadnezzar. Finally, he truly understood that he is nothing. He finally had peace with God. And he's never mentioned in the book of Daniel. Until he dies and his son takes over. Now, in today's message, when Daniel is driving before King Belshazzar and to interpret this handwriting, and Daniel convicts him by saying, Those you knew all this thing. What Daniel is reminding King Belshazzar is this. You knew the consequence of pride in King Nebuchadnezzar. You saw him. He's your dad. You saw him go from a really mighty, all powerful king, and he was a beast for seven years. You saw that with your own eyes. You experienced it. You saw that your king, after seven years, came back as a king, a greater king, because now he knew he was a humble king. And he said, what? No, God is the almighty God. Anybody who is proud, God's going to humble him. As he has made me into a beast for seven years to make me realize this. What David is convicting King is this. You knew all these things. What Daniel is convicting King Belshazzar is that though you knew that you needed to be humble and give God all the glory, you became proud and conceited. Not only that, you took it a step further by making fun of the Most High God, by, pay, by taking the vessels from the temple of God and using them for your drunkenness. You do all these things, yet you chose to defy God. You chose to make fun of God. You chose to be proud and conceited. I want to ask all of you, how about you? Jesse, do you know anything about God? Yes, right? David, do you know anything about God? CJ, have you seen how God works in your parents' life? Jimin, have you seen how God works in pastors' lives and in church? This message could be for you. God could be saying to you, though you knew all these things, what are you doing about it? All of you most of you were brought up in Christian families, right? You have seen how God works. You have been felt, you know, not to be, not to be proud, not to be considered, not to be self-fulfilling, self-satisfying. You know you need to be humble. You know you have to love other people more than yourself. You know all these things. What Daniel is talking is to you right now. <coughs> Though you know all these things, how have you been living? Jenna, all those things you know about God, have you been living according to what you know? Don't answer. Shio. <laughs> 시가 지금 하나님에서 그 아, 모든 많은 것 보고 경험한 것대로 지금 살고 있는지. That's what Daniel is asking all of us right now. I want to close. Today is going to be a short sermon. Before we close, I want you to take an inventory of your life right now. Take an inventory of things in your head. What do you know? 
I want you to go through your memory banks, go through the heart, all the things you saw, all the things you've heard, all the things you believed in regards to God, all the things you felt, all the things God has done for your parents and you throughout your life. Though you know all these things, then I want all of us to say one thing that we know about God. I want you to ask yourself, what do I know about God? Let me start. I know that God forgave me for millions of sins that I have committed. I know that. I know that God has already forgiven me for millions of sins that I've committed. He forgave me, He loves me, and He's willing to forgive a million more for me. That's what I know. I know that from the bottom of my heart. Nathan, Jimin, Shu, Rebecca, what do you know? Think to yourself, what's one thing that I know about God already? Bora, Joyce, Jenna, I want you to think about yourself and say, what's the thing that I know for sure? This is my God, and this is what He has done for me. Calvin, Chiu, Jesse, Isaac, CJ, all of you, Jaden, David, think about what's the thing that you know about God and what you have done about it. Daniel's warning to King Balthazar is warning to every one of us, though you know all these things. I know our teachers, James, Juyong, Hedgen, all experienced God. You know, God has been so good to their lives. God has given them a lot of things. God has made them mature with so much experience, so much suffering maybe at times, so much discipline at times, so much caring, so much forgiveness at times. And the thing is, we know all these things. Not only in here, in here, I know. And I want to convict you, like Daniel. Though you know all these things, I you the Lord of your life. I do not worship in God. Are you making fun of God by doing whatever you want to do? Let's close our eyes right now. Christine, just stay there. Don't, don't come up here. It's okay. I want all of us to close our eyes and say, God, forgive me. I know you. You are such a good, good God. You're such a loving God. You're such a forgiving God. You know, we have broken your heart so many times. We have done things that, that have just made you cry over us, Lord. We have acted in ways that have hurt us and hurt others. We have done things that we are ashamed of to be a Christian. We did all these things though we knew who you are and what you have done for us, Lord. And I pray that you would forgive me. I want every one of you to pray this prayer. That you have demonstrated yourself to us, to me. You have revealed who you are to me. You have shown yourself as a good father to me. You have shown yourself through our parents, through our siblings, through our friends through our youth pastors, through our teachers. I know who you are. And though I knew, I still didn't follow. And I am sorry. But I believe, Father, that as Jesus said, when I repent, you will forgive me. And you are waiting for me with open arms to receive me because you want 
me to be with you at all times. That it's not about how bad we are, but how good you are, Lord. That we could commit one million sin and commit one million more, but you are willing and able to forgive that million sin again, Lord. I pray that at this moment, that you would convict us of all the sin, but then afterwards give us to joy because you still call us your sons and daughters, that you still love us, and you had a, have made a covenant to the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who said, I have already paid the price for you. That it's okay. But you, being indifferent to me, that's not okay. That you will be waiting the balance. And if you are found to be wanting, that I cannot help you. This I cannot do. I pray right now that each one of you would take an inventory of your life, the goodness that God has displayed for you, and simply say, Father, I love you. we fall down but you get up you help us to get up every single time and this is our life until the moment we die we're going to fall but we're going to get up because of not who we are but because who you are you are not a quitter Lord. you will never quit on us it doesn't matter if we committed the same sin one million times you're going to help us up one million and one time because you are so so good, Lord. I pray at this moment, Lord, that we would all commit ourselves to you again. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ.